This is a uh, video on a Grizzly 700 uh, that is overheating. Um, it's a 2011. Uh, basically what my father said was he was out riding the other day and uh, it overheated. It started burping out some of the coolant um, and that he heard the fan running once in a while pretty much intermittently but basically not working. And that's obviously what caused the overheating issue. So I figured since I had this apart, I would try to do a short video and show how to test this and also try to help maybe some guys out who don't really know where to start. So first of all, with something like this, you'd want to remove the front racks and the, the couple of panels right there um, under the, the racks so you can get to the battery fuses, relays, and whatnot. Um, also, you're gonna wanna remove the right hand, well, you're gonna wanna remove actually a couple of the uh, covers uh, around the airbox and the clutch cover, or the clutch cover side. But um, <clears throat> the first thing you'd wanna do is remove those panels, come over here, find the fuse box, which is right here. When you lift it up, it's labeled underneath uh, exactly what fuse is what, which is which, whatever. Um, the 20 amp fuse right here, the one in the middle, which is green, actually has constant power. And if you test both sides and you have power, you know that that fuse is working. The key does not need to be on in order to test that fuse. Um, after that, basically the first thing you'd want to try is the fan. And what you'd really want to do is just look right down there, that white connector. It's not that difficult to get to actually. You reach down underneath the fender and over the top of the, the fender and you can disconnect it with both hands. Then you can reach the bottom half, which goes directly to the fan. And you should try putting 12 volts DC to it. And obviously if the fan works, you know that's not the problem. But if you start testing everything and you don't know that the fan actually works, you're gonna be chasing your tail for quite some time. So I would recommend testing that. Um, next. What you should do is <clears throat> come over here and remove this tube right here. It joins on right there. That is the clutch exhaust tube. Um, basically, it's right in your way of getting to the thermostat area. <clears throat> the thermostat is right here. And that black connector right there is your thermal thermal sensor <clears throat> which is responsible for uh, turning your fan on and off and whatnot so what you'd want to do is reach in there and disconnect this connector here <clears throat> and you want to jump that connector best thing to do is basically take a paper clip straighten it out use a small one not a large because there's such small connectors in there and make sure that they are in the wire themselves <clears throat> and by doing that what you're doing is trying to force the fan to run constantly and then you can go about testing and finding out where the problem is if you like you say have a good fuse and the fan works because you put power straight to it. Now you know there's an issue somewhere else and you have to track that down. Whether it's a broken wire or whatever. The bad thermal sensor, uh, so on and so forth. But um, if the fuse is bad, you have to figure out if you have a pinched wire, shorted wire, something to that extent. What I did was, the next thing, these three um, relays right here. One, two, and three are all exactly the same. Obviously, they're responsible for different jobs, but this front one, so you can see where it is, closest 
to the front of the machine is your fan relay. And by jumping your uh, connector over here and forcing the system to try to run the fan, obviously make sure you connected your fan connector again if it was disconnected. And um, what you'd want to do is if you suspect this and you test it and it's not getting power, which you can, it's just on a, on a rubber grommet, <clears throat> pop it off, you can actually test the bottom for power uh, coming in and out and whatnot. But if you suspect that that is bad, <clears throat> you can switch them. That's why I numbered them one, two, and three so I couldn't mess them up. Basically what you'd want to do is take one of them, disconnect it, switch it with the one that you think is bad, the front one being the fan, and start the machine. And if the machine instantly kicks the fan on, well, you know, you got a bad relay. But <clears throat> I tra traced it through, you know, and found that the relay was bad. And basically what it was is it was weak and... By weak, I mean it's a electromagnet in there, and it was not collapsing and holding the contacts together, and or the contacts are scorched and burnt up inside, and it was no longer making good contact. So, um, like I say, the fan was basically not working at all, and I ended up switching one of them, and instantly it started working perfect. So obviously I bought a new one. But the thing is, if you just turn the key on, that is not going to actually turn the fan on. Um, what you'd want to do is turn the key on and by having that thermal sensor connector jumped, the uh, overheat light or temperature light stays on and it's trying to run that fan. I'll show you real quick by running the machine what it was actually doing and then I'll shut it off and explain. So if I just turn the machine on again without it running, I just shut it off, turn it back on. It will not run that fan. It has to be running. But the biggest thing was the reason why I was showing you how it was kind of kicking in and out is because I was actually tapping up here. Um, I was tapping on the relay right here on the top of it, just you know, trying to make the contacts collapse. And that's what was causing the fan, excuse me, to kick in and out. Um, but basically the other day when it was brought to me by my father, the fan was not working, period. So um, <clears throat> after I figured that out, I bought a new relay. I'm going to show you real quick. Just going to set this down. <clears throat> Change out the relay with a new one. And there's the new one. Just set it right there. You'll turn the key on, which again, the fan is not running. Once we start it,
fan runs and will keep running because the thermal sensor has jumped. Now obviously, if the first thing you did was jump this uh, thermal sensor and the whole system works, well, you know you have a bad thermal sensor. But anyway, you get the picture, you have to chase this stuff through, follow it through, have a little common sense. Um, again, that was the culprit right here. The front relay is your fan relay. Everything else is fine after I tested it. But here is another issue that some guys have had and don't really know where to start looking for it. I, again, did not have this problem and I did not have to take this apart, but I did it just because to show, you know, where it is and whatnot. Um, trying not to make this too long of a video, but wanted to include this. Basically, the back rack has to come off which is six bolts, including these little guys. Then you have to get to this area of the machine. And basically, if you look up underneath there, these back clips here, uh, right up in here, whoops, this is hard, uh, right here, they're actually in there pretty well, all those clips, so don't force them, but you have to basically pinch in on the sides here, and this is already kind of loose, but by pinching in and moving it around and whatnot, you can pop this panel right off and then just set that right down. The reason why I wanted to show you this is because this is actually part of the fan system. All the way back here, on the right side, away from the muffler, they put this little guy right here. Um, basically for cooling purposes. The reason why it's back here is so it doesn't get so much heat. But what this is, is a fan circuit breaker. It has two bullet connectors right here that just join onto the wire harness. Um, it's obviously held on with a zip tie and some electrical tape right from the factory. Um, there is a basically a little um, circuit breaker in there. And without pretty much somebody showing you that, you probably wouldn't find it because under here, if you're looking around for that, there's barely any wires. There's just this wire, which is the same wire, but it's over by the rectifier, which runs under here, and you basically cannot see it anywhere until it pops out right there. But here's the thing. If you test everything else, the fuse, the relay, the fan itself, the thermal sensor, and you're still having an issue, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it may be all the way back here, which High Lifter actually makes one for about $15, and I believe it's supposed to run the fan a little longer and not trip out so easily and whatnot. But um, anyway, you can replace this, worst case scenario. Now, I'll show you real quick, um, if everything is working correctly, when you have the system jumped, everything's connected with a new solenoid, or what is, I should say a solenoid that works. When you turn this on, and come back here, I don't even know if I can test this like this, but basically, if you if you were to test these wires right now, you have nothing. But as soon as the machine is running, You have power on both sides of that. So again, if you're trying to test the system and you have power only on one side or something to that effect, you may want to look into a new fan circuit breaker. But <clears throat> this isn't easy to test and show when you're by yourself and whatnot, but I figured I would at least point out the location of this. It's all the way in the back. 
of the machine under the racks. So anyway, if you know where this stuff is, hopefully you can figure out how to test it and what's causing your machine to overheat. Uh, so anyway, I figured I'd do that video and try to pass on some of this. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps.